Hey my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kira and welcome to everyone that's new and thank you so much for clicking on this video. And I hope you stick around. Don't forget to hit that subscription button and for everyone don't forget to hit the bell to ensure you get notified whenever I post a video. But let's jump into today's video. Today will be kind of like a story time as well as tips and help or motivation for those living with fertility issues. Now, the misconception sometimes with fertility issues is, you know, there are different types. Some people um, have trouble getting pregnant. Some people have trouble staying pregnant. Um, some people can't get pregnant at all. Um, as well as various other host of fertility issues. Um, well, to give a bit of a backstory, because I know some people are like, wait, but you have a child. Yes, um, I do. I have a beautiful one-year-old, <laughs> which is a godsend. I had DJ, I had DJ 22 days before my 35th birthday. I am what they considered, a, what did they call me? An advanced maternal mother. <laughs> so a little back history. Um, as a teenager, I did experience, you know, irregular cycles from time to time. Um, it was nothing major, you know, I really wasn't concerned with it as a, a preteen and a teenager. It was just like, oh, you know, and you know, to me, it was a godsend when I didn't have one because I didn't understand, um, you know, it was late. It was, I had nothing to worry about. I was like 14, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. I had nothing to worry about in my teen years. So I was like, okay, I really didn't pay any attention. Um, later on in life, um, as I was in a 12 and a half year relationship with my high school sweetheart, um, when we were in our 20s, you know, we had moved in together. We were both um, stable in our careers. He was a corrections officer and I was an underwriter for lawyers malpractice insurance. But it never happened and it wasn't happening and I was like, okay, what's going on here? Some red flags started, you know, kind of flying up of well, what's going on. Um, I spoke to my OB and she was just like, oh, okay, you know, I mean, it's probably just your irregular. She put me on birth control uh, patch, an ortho ever patch to try to regulate my cycles. Um, I did that for maybe a couple of years. Um, I didn't like the way it made me feel. Um, I don't like medication anyway, so I had stopped taking that. Um, it didn't seem to help. It didn't do anything. I thought it was doing more detriment to my body than helping. So then, you know, years later, still nothing. Um, Some tips, like I said, would be throughout. Some tips for those dealing with or in communication with people um, going through or growing through infertility is be mindful of what you say to them. Be mindful of how you talk to people. Um, a lot of times people would say to me, what are you waiting for? You're not getting any younger. Don't you want kids? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And... It was my secret battle because as I got older, I started realizing, you know, I may not have kids. Um, as I was getting later on, I, I would think it was about, I was 26 years old, 27 years old. And I was like, you know, I might not ever become a mother. And it hurt. And it was my own secret battle. I never discussed it with anyone. I never, you know, reached out to anyone. But I didn't understand why. And that's some things that, you know, women that go through this, they don't understand why. And doctors sometimes can't really give you a concrete. They'll give you their hypotheses of what they think may be a contributing factor to it. Um, when I was when I was in my 30s, I now, about 30 years old, I was diagnosed with Graves' disease, um, which is an autoimmune disease that affects my... My thyroid, um, 
which then has lead me, led me to um, develop hyperthyroidism, which then also contributed. On top of that, I was also diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, and I have some fibroids. <laughs> so it's a whole big co conglomerate of reasons of why possibly I've had fertility issues. Um, it became very depressive. You know, you, you want to be very happy for everyone who is having children and you participate and you are genuinely happy for them. But just as happy as you are for them, you're sad for yourself. And it really hurts. And, you know, you have a, a battle of the wills with yourself. You blame yourself. Like I said, I was in a 12 and a half year relationship and I started questioning my womanhood. And questioning why I couldn't provide this one thing. It was very painful. Um, and especially, you know, like I said, speaking to people and then they're not being <laughs> intentionally hurtful. But, you know, and know that people aren't trying to be mean. They are trying to be helpful and genuine in the best way that they know how. Just having to constantly explain or... Oh, yeah, you know, it's, I'm just not ready right now, or I, I will be, you know, or my favorite phrase is, when God wills it to happen, it'll happen. You know, after a while, I just got tired, and I was just like, I don't want to discuss this anymore. Um, and that's, that's something also, if you know someone who's um, going through this, or if they're attempting to get pregnant, you can check on them, ask them how they are doing. Not how the situation is going. Not, you know, do you have any leads or, or or what's going on. You know, just genuinely ask them about their person, how they're feeling. Um, is there, do they need to go out? Would they like to go for a walk or would they like to talk? Um, be a listening ear uh, for them. Because it is painful and sometimes, like I said, it's a, it's a secret pain. Women put on their smile, we, we dust ourselves off and we pick ourselves up and we smile and we continue on, but it hurts. And like I said, I'm continuing to go through it. Yes, I've been blessed. As I said, my son DJ is a blessing. Nothing short of a miracle. He's my miracle baby. And... I would love to have more siblings for him. But it's something that I, like I said, I live with and I grow through. And when it happens, it'll happen. And sometimes those, those little pains come back up. Women who are going through, we cannot stand, I know I couldn't stand taking a pregnancy test. I hated taking them. They All the old feelings of all the negative um not pregnant or just one line or minus signs after a while that just builds up in your spirit and you become you you become scarred by it almost and it hurts and it's almost like a a post traumatic feeling of when you have to take a pregnancy test you're excited on one hand and on the other hand you're like it's going to be another negative again um well, why do I have to take this anyway? Like that anger is just always kind of under the surface. And I still get these feelings now kind of when people are like, um, do you want more kids? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Oh, uh, well, when do you want them? Or something of that extent is kind of like, soon. <laughs> Whenever it happens, it happens. When God wills it to be, it'll be. You know, because it's, it's not something I can control, and it's kind of sad, it, or, or it kind of hurts, rather, that, you know, that's not something I can control in my life. But I do thank God for the blessing that I do have. I don't want anybody to think I'm ungrateful at all. And that's another thing, too, that people have to understand. We aren't ungrateful. We aren't selfish. We aren't petty. We're just women that want, want to love, love on someone. So something that you want to watch saying to someone that's going through and growing through infertility is, oh girl, at least you can sleep at night or at least you have peace to yourself and 
the little things that you think are almost like a burden of parenting and motherhood, we crave that. We would love to be awakened out of our sleep by the sounds of a baby. We would love to have to be tired. We want your tiredness. <laughs> so just be mindful. Be very mindful. Be sensitive to women that are going through this issue. And I don't say suffering with because there's a reason and a season for everything. And there's a purpose. Um, I used to, to um, calm my spirit. I used to tell myself, you know what, maybe God has placed me here to be mother, mothers to somebody else's child or to be a contributing factor into a, you know, somebody else's child's life. And so that's how I started living my life. I would, you know, babysit if I was needed or I would be ever present to help out if I could. I became I became like a fairy godmother to everyone um, to help. And that was just my thing. So I just want you to know you're not alone. You have a community of women behind you. And if this reaches anyone to give them hope, I'm happy. If it just reaches one person. And you're not sad and you're not crying alone because I, I, I did that many a plenty of days. The tears would just flow when I was by myself because I didn't understand why. It was an unanswered question. No one could give me a concrete reason. Um, I know one OB, I was asking her, um, well, will I ever be able to have children? She's like, well, we're not going to discuss that right now. Get these cysts and these fi the fibroids and get you get an ultrasound to check and see how many of those you have. And I understood that, but I still wanted a definitive answer to my question. Would I ever, could I ever? She was no longer my OB, mind you. <laughs> if I can say anything, I wish you peace. I wish you serenity. I wish you hope. I wish you joy. I wish you love. I wish you the consideration and support of everyone around you. I wish you sensitivity. And I wish you be more gentle with yourself. <laughs> be understanding to yourself. Love yourself a little more. Hug yourself a little more. And know that it'll be okay. Whichever way God plans this to be for you, it will be okay. And you will, my sister, survive this. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope this helps someone. It helps me to talk about it <laughs> for myself. Like I said, you're not alone in this. I'm going through, growing through this with you. And I thank you so much for listening. And I hope you come back. And until next time, be positive. And if you need to, seek out a support group. Find someone you can talk to. Go to your church if you are a spiritual person. Go to a therapist. There is nothing wrong with going to counseling.